What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I shall be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the 2023 higher spec M3 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro. I will soon be uploading a number of videos comparing this MacBook to other MacBook models. So if you are new around here and you want to be one of the first 5,000 people to do so, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So before I start, I do want to point out that the full spec for the model that I tested, along with links to where you can purchase this MacBook Pro, can be found down below in this video's description. So the first benchmarking application which I ran on this MacBook Pro was Geekbench 4, which was run through Rosetta as it's not natively available on macOS. Now Geekbench is good as it runs a number of different tests and algorithms, and depending on how they've performed, and how long it took to perform them, it will then give a score accordingly. So for the CPU test, I got a single core score of 8,400 and a multi-core score of 66,913. I also performed Geekbench 4's graphics test using the GPU found within the M3 Max chip. It was worth noting that this MacBook Pro has a 40 core GPU and not 30 like we see in other models. So the first compute test which I ran was the OpenCL test. Now with this test, I got a score of 317,008. And when running the metal test, I got a score of 268,493. Once again, these tests were run through Rosetta. The next testing application which I ran was once again from Geekbench, this time from their slightly newer version, Geekbench 5, which has an increased amount of tests designed to further tax the machine when compared to Geekbench 4. And just like that previous test, this test was run through Rosetta on the MacBook. Once again, Geekbench 5 scores based on performance and time taken. So when testing the CPU, I got a single core score of 1,728 and a multi-core score of 18,378. I once again tested the compute performance of the 16 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro to see how well it would perform through Geekbench 5. Now the scores that I got when running the OpenCL test was 77,487 and when testing Metal I got a score of 92,095. The next test I ran was once again from Geekbench, this time running their newest set of tests found in Geekbench 6. Now once again running the CPU test, I got a single core score of 3,150 and a multi-core score of 21,226. When running the compute test through Geekbench 6, I got an OpenCL score of 92,133 and a metal score of 154,966. Sticking to the trend of testing the CPU, I then ran Cinebench R23. Cinebench is a good benchmarking program as it tests each individual core and then tests all cores combined and then gives us a ratio based on time taken to complete each task. So for this test, I got a single core score of 1,878 and a multi-core score of 23,929, which gives us a ratio of 12.74. The next test I ran was once again from Cinebench, but from their newest set of tests found in their 2024 release. So for this test, I got a CPU single core score of 141 points and a multi-core score of 1,689, which gives us a ratio of 12. I then ran the Cinebench 2024 GPU test and it got a score of 13,182. When running Blender on this MacBook Pro to render the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 3 minutes and 25 seconds to complete and whilst using the GPU, it took 24 seconds to complete. And when using the CPU to render the BMW scene, it took 1 minute and 30 seconds to complete and when using the GPU, believe it or not, it took 12 seconds to complete this, which was very, very good indeed. I then exported some video footage to H.264 at both Full HD and 4K using Final Cut Pro with background rendering turned off. So the time taken to export the Full HD project was 26 seconds, whereas it took a little longer to export the 4K project with it taking 1 minute and 24 seconds to complete this. The next test I ran was an SSD speed test 
using the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and got higher scores of 6,325 megabytes per second for write and read speeds of 4,992 megabytes per second. When I ran the Aegis Systems Test, I got write speeds of 4,437 megabytes per second and read speeds of 2,914 megabytes per second. So you can see that there is a considerable difference when it comes to the read and write speeds depending on which program you use. For the life of me, I couldn't get Nova Bench 2 to run on this MacBook Pro, which was a little weird, but I've got a feeling it's because this chip is just so damn new. But if I get any scores in the future, I'll be sure to leave it down below in this video's description. The next benchmarking application which I ran on this MacBook Pro was GFX Bench Metal which is once again designed to test out the performance of the 40 graphical cores found within the M3 Max. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests from both higher and lower levels of intensity. Now I have calculated the average across each category, but as always, I will show you each individual result. So for the higher level intensive tasks, I got an average frame rate of 675.3 frames per second, whereas for the lower, I got a score of 569.24 frames per second. Sticking to testing the GPU portion of the M3 Max, I ran several tests from 3D Mark. So starting off with the wildlife test, it was useless. It maxed this test out, clocking 120 frames per second. Therefore, I chose to run the wildlife stress test. Now with this stress test, I got a higher score of 20,040 and a lower score of 20,035, which clearly shows that even whilst running this test, it was incredibly stable. So after seeing how this MacBook Pro performed in that previous stress test, I was quite curious, so I ran the Wildlife Extreme test. Now with this test, I got a score of 20,040, and it also clocked in an average of 120 frames per second, which is incredible. So to further tax the machine, I decided to run the Wildlife Extreme stress test. Now with this, the best score it achieved was 20,040, and the lowest it achieved was 19,925, which is a decrease in performance of around 0.5%, which is shockingly good. I honestly did not expect the performance to be this stable after running it so many times. It clearly shows that the M3 Max in the 16-inch MacBook Pro is being cooled very well, especially considering that it's run all the previous tests. I also wanted to test the ray tracing capabilities of this MacBook Pro's M3 Max. So I ran the solar test from 3 d Mark and got a score of 31,560. And no surprises here, it also averaged 120 frames per second during this test. So when running the solar-based stress test, the highest score I got here was 31,560 and the lowest I got was 31,211, which is a decrease in performance of around 1%, which once again, considering this is being run after all of the previous tests, it's quite impressive. I then ran the V-Ray test and got a score of 14,802. I also performed a number of benchmarking tests from Unigen, the first of these being the Heaven benchmarking test, which is a heavy CPU and GPU test. Now when running this test of 1728 by 1117, the score that I got here was 4,239 and I also got 168.3 frames per second on average. And when running the Valley test at the exact same resolution of 1728 by 1117, I got a score of 5,440 with an average frame rate of 130 frames per second. So the next graphics test which I ran was running the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. Now when running this benchmark on this MacBook Pro, it instantly suggested running at the highest settings whilst also running at native resolution, so that's 3456 by 2160. Now when running this benchmark using those settings, I got an average frame rate of 51 frames per second, whilst it also rendered 7968 frames. When dropping the graphics quality down to medium, it then rendered 9000 and 14 frames with an average frame rate of 57 frames per second. When dropping the resolution slightly to 2560 by 1600 whilst keeping to medium settings, it this time averaged 94 frames per second whilst rendering 14,532 frames. And finally, when I dropped the resolution further to 1920 by 1200, it this time managed to render 7,702 frames with an average frame rate of 43. 
Now you're probably wondering why on earth is it slightly lower this time around? Now the interesting part about this is up to this point I had been running using high performance mode. Now you may have noticed in the top right corner that the MacBook's battery had started to drop. So I think what happened, it then dropped itself from high performance mode to potentially normal mode. Now when running at this same resolution again after charging, it then managed to render 22,314 frames with an average frame rate of 142 frames per second. And just because, hell, why not? I then dropped it to 1280 by 854 pixels and got an average frame rate of 173 frames per second and it managed to render a total of 27,183 frames. When running the Antutu HTML browser benchmark, I got a score of 92,865. And also whilst running the speedometer 2.0 test, I got a score of 582. So that'll be it for today's video. Of course, if you've enjoyed the video and you've perhaps learned something a little different, then be sure to leave a thumbs up rating down below. And if you've got any questions with anything you've seen in today's video, then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section, or alternatively, you can hit me up on my social media, links to which can be found down below in this video's description. As I mentioned earlier, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers. So if you are new around here, then be sure to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell icon, to be notified of when a new video goes live. But once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.